Hi everybody, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. Today we are going to be working on this picture frame that I found in a local um, homework store called The Range, only for a couple of pounds, and I loved it. One, because it's got that old rustic look, a look, <laughs> yeah, look, and it's got these love arts here, and I'm going to show you how to upcycle this into a piece of art. So it's got your uh, piece of rope to hang it up. What I am gonna do is show you a different version of Hearts of the Ocean. Now this could be an ideal um, Valentine's gift for Sumner. It could just be a present that you wanna give to yourself. But it's all about love and love of the ocean. Now I'm hoping that this will give you a feeling of when you get the driftwood, the love, and then we're going to put a little bit of ocean in here. Some people may not have seen how to use it on glass. Now this glass is going to be very thin, so you have to be very careful with the heat that you apply so you don't shatter it. You also have to consider how thick your resin is going to be, so you make sure that the back area here will still close. I'm contemplating, do I leave the back piece on or do I remove it? So depending on if you're holding it down or hanging it, should I say, from your window, so you've got natural light coming through, will that give you more depth of the ocean? Or will it look best if it's just hanging on a wall? But I'll let you decide, but come with me on this journey. The first stage I'm gonna do is remove the glass, so deconstruct this frame, level my glass, make sure it's dust free, contemplate the thickness, and then start to mix up my resin and pigments. Now with this one, I don't normally coat the glass what am i trying to say it's like that don't normally coat the glass with acrylic i let the pigment do its magic for you with this but i don't know i might have a go at doing it that way i might not anyway by the time i get my camera set up i'll go in my intuition and hopefully that's a success all right remember thumbs up subscribe share comments are always welcome i hope you enjoy this video and i hope it inspires you I've applied my lighting now. I'm hoping this is going to be bright enough. I've just reorganized my art space and I can now go around four corners, not four, three corners of my box where I create it. So I'm hoping then I can move around as need be. Anyway, I have deconstructed my picture frame and I'm left with this glass, got dust particles on it. So I am now going to use my alcohol wipe to just give that a clean over before I mix up my resin. And this is going to need very little resin. 200 mils will probably be too much, but I'm going to mix up 200 mils and I have a spare coaster mold to one side where I can put that in because we don't want to waste this resin. I'm hoping that you're not going to see my dressing gown as well in here. Ooh, yeah, you <laughs> I'll take that off. It's a bit cold here. Anyway. Giving it a wipe, making sure I'm getting rid of all fingerprints or bits of dust particles. And by the time I have mixed up my paint, this should be all go. All go. All good, not all go. There we go. I'll see you on the other side of mixing my resin. I have stirred my resin for three minutes. I have only mixed up 100 mils because that's gonna be more than ample for this. And rather than pushing more than what I need, I'm just gonna do this. And then if I've got time, I'll create fresh batch for the next piece that I'm gonna work. Now there is some bubbles in here. It's our winter time. Um, so it's took a little bit of um, stirring, but it's all mixed together nicely. But I am just going to let that sit and rest for a little bit because this is a small piece. I've got more than enough time to work on it. And I'm just going to let those bubbles dissipate as much as possible because I want to reduce the amount of heat the way I'm going to apply to this piece. Now, this is going to be a two-layer piece, so you don't want it too thick. And I'm going to graduate with the lighter blues that I normally use for my ocean and on my second one come through with that beautiful green the ocean the ocean green or ocean blue I'll show you the color soon through color me happy and graduate it down I want a fairly calm piece but I do want it to give you the feeling of the ocean so I'll place that down and while that is just resting a little bit 
I'm going to tape the back of this because nobody wants to deal with resin nipples on the back of a glass piece. So just use your normal packing tape for people that's not used to resin. Um, and that will just help ease when you, if you do have any resin that goes underneath, you won't have to apply a heat gun to remove it. It should just peel off nicely. So that's what I'm going to do before we move on to the next stage. Hello, Zeus, you come to join me. I've made my colour selection. Now I'm going to need very little colour. Normally on my bigger pieces I graduate them by five shades of blue. This time I'm only going to use three. Now they're three very similar colours but they are very subtle but that's going to help hopefully with the depth when I come back with the other one. It will be my blue green, green blue and turquoise which are all from the Peebo. You can see the well loved I am going to do something, 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 something different, which is going to be autumn gold. I'm going to use that to represent sand. It's not going for realism, but I may add a bit of my natural sand in there, which is what I normally do. But I'm going to use that for the illusion of the sand, maybe just in the corner there. My casting craft will be there to create my waves. And I'm going to add a tiny little bit of the super sparkle white to my resin. So that it just adds for that pretty little sparkling effect. All right, here we go. So to start with, in my resin that's mixed up, I'm gonna add just a tiny little bit of this super sparkle white from the Colour Cottage. It's my new addiction. I'm not gonna need a great deal because I only want that subtleness of the glistening of the water. So I think, that's going to be enough. I'll mix it in and have a look what I feel. Okay, that's just got that tiny little bit of sparkle going through. Very subtle, very happy with that. And I can always add a bit more sparkle should I wish. You may not be able to see it when I come to the second layer. I'm using silicone cups, better for the environment, better for your pocket, easy to clean, you can reuse over and over. I had another set that lasted me nearly a year until I started to plat uh, break the silicone. But because I'm graduating the same colours other than the sand, I can use the same cup and just keep adding the resin and toning through the different pigments as I go. I hope I'm making that clear. Anyway, I am going to start with where I believe my green blue will go towards the back. Then I'll come back with the turquoise and maybe then the blue green. And then finally with the bottom gold. Now what I will have to do is just add tiny little bits at a time and making sure I leave enough back for the sand and the resin. Oh, sand and the resin. Duh, it's not resin. I mean sand and the waves. Now, acrylic, very, very little, no more than 10%. So I think that's going to be more than enough. You can't see it. More than enough for the amount of resin I've added. You want no more than 10%. Otherwise, it's going to do some weird stuff to your resin because resin hates water and acrylic is water. But these peebles react quite nicely. Now, less is more. You can always add, you can't remove. Now that's quite transparent, probably a bit too much transparency in there. So I'm going to add a tiny little bit more pigment and then add that. Now if I was to create the base coat in these colours, which I normally do, that would add a nice little bit of depth because you can see through to the bottom. But because I'm using glass, I want a little bit of uh, boldness to my colour without going over the top. I only add the res uh, the pigment, the acrylic, just as I'm going to apply it to my board. Let's do that now.
So resin is self-leveling. It's going to try and level out, but I'm going to try and help it uh, because I don't want it to fall off the edges too much or I'm going to lose some resin. But I'm going to guide it to there and bring it forward. And then less is more again. You can always add more resin if you've not got enough. I've got plenty in my cup. So I'm going to bring it forward now. It is very transparent. That's okay at this stage. I'm not too worried that second coat can work magic. Might make it look even more glassy effect with water. Doing the same now, and I'm going to bring it through to the turquoise. Similar amounts of pigment, acrylic paint versus the resin. Oh, this tube's nearly done. most likely going to be too much but I'll try it so of course is a bit more solid in colour so I may end up doing mostly it in this colour because when I come over with a green as the second coat, that's going to be lovely. Make sure that it's all mixed through and there are no stringy bits. Quite transparent still, but still more solid than the other one. Let's apply that. I'm actually preferring this colour for what I'm feeling for this piece now. And take it to the end and then pull it forward. Now, I hardly want there to be any sand, I just want the hint of a sand. And I am going to have plenty of resin left for working on the moles. Oh, I'm so glad I never did 200 mil. And don't forget the white. That's all white. Oh God, mum joke of the day. All right, final color. Hardly want any of this blue. And then if I do need to come back and add any more color, I'm gonna come back and add that aqua because I think that's what I want it to feel like. So this will be the final colour pigment I'm adding, which is the blue-green.
Now I mix this one thicker because I learned from the green one at the back. It's very similar to the turquoise. It's definitely the blue green, not the turquoise, just checked. But this one has more of a shimmer to it, like a shell-like look. And I always bring the tones through, so it adds to a, a suggestion of movement. Last bits out. has done with these pigments so I'm just going to bring my resin forward a bit so it doesn't go over the edges too much drag my brush through but I'm going to heat that up so that should blend and I'm going to get an alcohol wipe just to clean this out so I can reuse it Moving as much of that pigment as I can because this is going to be the sand, although the sand will always have a mixture of ocean in there. So we're going to be good to add sand, and then the last thing is the foam. Just tidying up the work area a bit. again and now we're going to add the color cottage autumn gold the rule of thumb goes 10 percent but you can be a lot more forgiving when it comes to like mica powders it blends beautifully with the resin and you're not going to get the same marshmallow effect is what i want to say if you add too much or like a thermal event but with pigment powders if you've not used those before wear a respirator i mean you should be wearing a respirator anyway when working with resin but the powders can fly around so you don't want to be inhaling any of that let alone inhaling the resin i'm showering i'm digressing so we've got a nice warm autumn gold there which should give you the suggestion of hopefully sand I'm going to leave a little gap between this and the ocean for the white and where the waves are going to crash. Or where the. Alright. Got a little bit of sand left over, but that was going to come in handy for something else. I'll leave that just to one side. And I need. To mix up some whites I just need one more cup hardly gonna need anything again we're just gonna go 
even less than I did with these because a little bit is going to go a long way. Talking tiny, it's just covering the bottom there. Hoping that this lighting is okay and you're seeing this. And casting craft is where I'm using. So just one little drop goes a long way. It's like a fluid. I've got some clear left if I do need to mix up any more white I can. I think I might need a tiny little bit more. Alright. And then if we have some a little bit further up, although I want to keep this quite a tranquil piece, it will add depth to the next layer that we probe with. So it'll give you a sense of movement. So maybe now you don't have to do this, but I tend to sort of zigzag a little bit so that you're getting some blue and some white mixed in. So hopefully it'll give you a feeling of movement. But I think I want just a little bit more here. And I'll see what this looks like when I get my heat gun on it and give it a quick going over whether I feel I need to add any more or not. I'm almost at maximum when it comes to... So these are just for suggestions, not for big waves or anything, but just to help create a bit of movement when I come down with the second layer. Maybe a little bit more in the middle. I can see it's starting to run off the edge now, where I'm at the maximum with the amount of resin I should really have on this piece. All right, what I do with that is just wipe. You don't want to lose too much resin, but if you've got silicone mats underneath, you can reuse that resin. When I heat it up, more is going to fall off. All right, let's torch it to remove any air bubbles, then one quick blast to move it around. And then that's it for tonight. Let it dry and then we we'll come back in 24 hours and do the next layer. And this is where we have to be careful with the amount of heat we're applying. I'm going to leave it for that for the amount of heat I'm applying. I'm going to let it settle down, getting my drip off so that'll settle down shortly. I'm going to come in with a straw just to try and create a little bit more movement there. Now don't do this if you have asthma or you've got lung problems, safety first. Breathing away from your resin, blow when you are uh, near it and try not inhale it anyway. Yeah. Let's do this. Mm. 
I'm going to add just a tiny little bit more white here. Then, that's it.
Okay. I can do no more with this layer. It's just going to be overworking. And that's what you have to remember sometimes. Just leave it because your second layer is going to give you a lot of the depth and some of the special effects. So I'm just going to nurse made this little bit, keep wiping underneath, removing the excess because it's got to be able to fit back in that frame. Always remember that. You want nothing on the edges. Check there's no dust, although for this layer, dust is not a major concern because I'm going to come over it with a second layer. I think that gold's quite a happy sand. All right, look for any things that really irritate you. Okay. Enjoying how this is coming together. I'll bring you in for a close-up. Okay, bringing you in for a flyover. This is where it is currently. I'm hoping it's going to cure pretty much like this and not change. So there's some nice depth just there. That gold's just added that nice little bit of brightness. And then through here, quite transparent, but quite a bit of movement created by adding that little bit of white. And then tomorrow, I'm going to bring in some of that nice green and bring it down. But try to preserve this part here if it stays as it is. Anyway, make sure you have a look for dust. Any final things, babysit it for a little while and cover up and I'll see you in 24 hours. Okay, we are back and this is cured enough for me to give the second layer. The second layer will come in with the Colour Me Happy Pigment, which will be the Ocean Blue. And it'll start dark here, but then I'll rub it in to the clear and hopefully stay around here, add a little bit more white and leave the rest, maybe as it should be. Now, it is smooth, but because it was a thin layer, in certain angles, you can see the glitter coming to the top. So you make that choice whether you want the glitter in there or not. I think it adds a lot of value. Uh, but I love the depth in here, so I'm hoping I'll be able to keep that. Anyway, I'm Sharon. I'm digressing. Let's get on with, hopefully, its second and final coat. I've mixed my resin. There's 200 mil in here because I'm working on a different project. As soon as I've done this, and this will be quite quick. That's all stirred. I've made sure that my area is level that I'm working on to prevent runoff. I'm not going to apply much heat to this. It will just be the torch to get rid of the air bubbles because I want this quite still. And I'm just going to get on with this. I'm contemplating, do I add more glitter? But I think I'm going to add a tiny little bit more glitter. So that'll be the super sparkle white that'll go into my resin. And I'll be able to use that for my other project as well. I'm going to add a little bit of clear down where I more or less want it to go to the white. Bring that back. If I mix too much of this ocean blue in here, it's okay because I'm using it for my next project I'm going to go on to. And that's the Colour Me Happy Pigment. Absolutely beautiful pigments to work with with resin. Uh, make sure you do check out my link in the description. I think I'm just going to add three drops. And I'm going to mix that in and see how intense that is. Because it's going to be a massive contrast to the light blue that's there. That's why I've got to make sure I only apply a little bit at the top and then blend it through to the clear. Beautiful. So just try and control this area. Okay. Let me 
and just observe what that's going to do. Spread that out. So this is where I'm going to now add the clear to make these meet and then I'll be able to work out if I need to add more pigment but I blend it with my fingers that way I feel I get more control you may decide to just do it And you want to be sparing with it because if you are going to add more colour pigment, you don't want to have too much runoff. Alright, this is where I'm going to use my fingers. It's a little bit of patience. Just keep working it through so it graduates down. I feel I need to just add a tiny little bit more dark here and then work it through a little bit. Do love what it's doing now. Watching your edges. And I'm just going to repeat the blending a little bit, but I am just making sure that the resin is coming to the end. So drag some of that colour down again and blend. Love it that. Just lifting it up so I can see because the stands are behind it, it's looking quite dark in certain areas, uh, but it's not when you lift it up. bit of dark at the top just to draw your eye down to that clear at the bottom. I 
Okay, so I feel I've done with the blending and I'm just gonna add a tiny little bit more white at the end. But I just need to make sure this is not gonna to cover too much of that effect that I enjoy there. So I may need to push it back. The white, I'm gonna use the Casting Craft Opaque White. A couple of drops added to it. my gloves off and torch this and then protect it from dust particles and just keep checking the edges for a little bit may add some more white here i have lost a bit of the part that i wanted to keep but it's done where it needs to and sometimes that subtle line there is going to go under the pigment because it will sink but it might just give you that illusion of slightly rippling that's happening i'll try to keep it subtle 3d effect no clear resin there or anything but i just want to looks like it's lifting up See how I feel about that one. I'd like to try something a little bit different with each one. Go 
going to now check for airs before I cover it up. Or should I say fluff? Brilliant. All right, let's cover this bad boy up after I give you a close up. Welcome back to Sharon from Vivi Days. This has cured. To show you, I've removed the masking taste from the back. Even from the back, it's not too bad, actually. Nice little shimmer. And it's cured pretty much as I left it. There is a few little... You might not be able to see it. I'll show you to the side. Can't focus on it, sorry. You can see a tiny little bit where the resin has gone down the side. Now, normally you'd love that with canvas because it gives you a round edge. But because I wanted to fit in here... I wanted it to be as flush, but I needed to leave for work and it kept moving slightly. But when it's lifted up, not too sure if you're going to be able to see, uh, a lot of movement in there. Love that blending. Love how the waves come forward. Not too sure if I really 100% enjoy the style of adding a few, few little bits of um, foam sort of separately there. I'll try one without, but it gives you an idea of different things you can do. Uh, no dust in there. Lots of sparkle, overall really happy. So I believe when we now put it in our frame and then add some embellishments, maybe with a few shells, maybe not. We'll see how we go. This piece is done and it is a cute, lovely piece, I think, for the ocean. But I'm Sharon, I'm digressing. Let's get on with this, shall we? I've angled it slightly, so I'm hoping you're going to get to see the view. But I'm going to move my silicone stands out of the way. I'm going to put my picture frame down. I'm going to see if this is going to fit in here still. Yay, it is. Now I need to work out, am I just going to put this on the back? So I'll try it with, I'll try it without. still fit which is crazy it is slightly raised you may want to put some tape around that but it has still fit in there which is amazing so let's turn it around and let's have a little look wow i really enjoy that the colors against that would be sort of driftwood i think that's a winner winner chicken dinner i don't know if you can see that sparkle there Right, I am coming in now and looking for some embellishments. I'm going to put them on top to start with and see what I think. And then I'll decide whether to add them permanently or not. I think I'm a future one. I'd like to try one a little bit more foamy. Maybe not add that piece there. However, it's still adding interest to it. Anyway, I'm sure and I'm digressing. Let's look what little beautiful things you've got in your treasure box of shell. Oh.
Okay, so I have worked out what shells I want where, and for me it's just been about balance, what complements. These shells were collected from my recent Australia trip, so it's very meaningful to me. I love some of the colours, the textures, the size. The starfish I just get from online, at Amazon or some of the like modelling shops, you can get miniature little things. And I just think it's a nice balance, so I'm going to go ahead with this and glue them down. So I've just got some silicone glue, which is a craft one, and I'm going to use that just to stick it into position. Okay, we'll leave that to set and then we'll come in and review. I decided not to put that on there because it's going to touch the surfaces very little and I don't want it to fall off at all. So it would have been nice to have them up there. I actually might put another shell just on top there while we're talking about it. We'll come back when this is dried and I will show you the end result. Hi everybody, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. It's review time, it's time to review how this final piece ended up. And what do you think? I think it is a cute little stunner and I'm going to do a few different interpretations on this, but it just goes to show how you can upcycle. Keep your eye out for some amazing picture frames that you can see in your local um, home stores and look for opportunities. Now I connected with this with the rustic look of it and that driftwood feel and those natural colours and that white and love of the ocean, you know me, hearts of the ocean. Sorry, camera angle keeps going on this. These shells are very special to me. They were collected on my recent trip to Australia and the starfish, that one was bought on Amazon. <laughs> but the colours that graduate down, I absolutely love it. For people that are followers of my art or my channel, you know that I normally keep my ocean choppy and I normally try and get the waves more 3D. But for this piece, I just wanted that tranquility and I wanted the colours to be the hero and how it's framed together and hopefully get an instant connect and connection to the ocean. So I've got just that gentle wave overlap in here. I've put a little bit more foam there just to give you that 3D effect. Now I've got a couple more of these picture frames because that's one of Sharon's top tip. You see anything that you really like and it's cheap and you can upcycle, buy in bulk because then you can keep um, in doing different interpretations of your art and trying it out and they're all ready to hand for people to buy. And yeah, so you may want to choose to leave this back off and have it hung up near... Um, the window and then you're going to get that transparency coming through of this on glass but i'm going to bring you in for a close-up but before i do thumbs up subscribe share comments are always welcome thank you for hanging out for me i hope that you like some of my creative ideas if you do want to purchase one of these make a connection with me other than that let's have a look at this close-up here we go for our close-up and fly over my arrangement of shells, I chose ones that I felt complemented this colour scheme, but also add a little bit of interest. Some of the delicateness of that is just stunning. The starfish, I always love a starfish. And again with the shells here, and I just wanted that balance approach, sets of three, sets of three up there. And look at this frame. It is just a really simple frame, but I think very rustic and adds a lot you saw that sparkle there i'll see if i can twist it a little bit more so you see a little bit of that sparkle i might bring my torch over you may not be able to see the sparkle but again you're not really seeing the true color 
No, I'm not getting to see the true colour. Let me bring it up. Let's go to the window. No. Nope. <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I could fly. Oh, let's go back anyway. From the top all the way down. Hopefully you can see that little bit of movement. There and that depth. Those lines that I refer to there, you can see they almost disappeared and became nothing but added just a nice little, I think, feature. And down to the big 3D wave. Now this is the one where normally I have my waves choppier than this, but I wanted to keep it simple to give other people a go. And I just felt this piece it needed to be. Sometimes you don't have to overstate. You may not like adding this bit like I mentioned before. That's the choice. And normally I use real sand where I put gold in, but I think for this piece it works really well and there's so much about it that I enjoy. Let me see if I can get that. Oh, look at that. I can get that little bit of ocean glistening there. Anyway, I'll bring it up from a different angle. See if we can get a little bit more of the colour and detail. But there we go. That's our close up. See you on the next video it has been a pleasure hanging out with you and if you are inspired by this or any of my work remember to tag me in it so i can see your work um yeah uh, because that's what gives back to me the artist anyway i'm digressing see you on the next video